Tom, coming to you from the International Institute for the Advancement of Sourdough Science and Research of Cleveland, Ohio, also known as My Kitchen. Thank you for selecting this video. In today's video, we're going to talk about an exciting new topic, and that is the use of pH testers or pH meters for sourdough baking. Now, I got interested in this a couple of years ago when I saw some people on social media were using pH testers, looks like a thermometer, they were sticking it in their dough to figure out when bulk fermentation was done. But I don't see a lot of bakers actually using these. I've seen people dabble with them. Then I came across this book, this fantastic new book by Thomas Teffrey Chamberlain from France. This is called A Sourdough Treatise. He's a fantastic sourdough baker in France and he uses pH readings throughout the entire book. And it really finally brought everything together in my mind where I was kind of instinctively knowing that managing the acidity of your starter and managing the acidity of your dough is really one of the secrets of sourdough baking, but nobody was really measuring it until I really found that in this book. So I went out and started looking into pH meters. I had looked at them over the years and they're kind of expensive, so I never really took the plunge, but now I'm gonna evaluate four different pH meters so that you can consider if these make sense for you as a sourdough baker. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, sometimes companies send me products to evaluate, sometimes I buy them. In today's video, this is a combination of both. Sometimes companies will give me a discount code that I can give to people like you, and if you use that code to buy their product, I might receive a ridiculously small commission. All of those details are disclosed in the description of this video. Because these relationships can change over time, I'd rather have you go there to get the most updated information on any relationships that I may have with these companies. But I can say I'm, I've just started using these pH meters over the last month or so. I'm still evaluating these as a beginner and I'm doing a completely objective assessment at this time. So what do pH meters or pH testers do? I'll use those terms interchangeably. Some companies call it a meter, some call it a tester. They basically measure the acidity of a liquid. So you can use it to measure the acidity of your starter. You can use it to measure the acidity of your dough. Those are the two places that people would use it in sourdough baking. The reason that you want to measure the acidity of your starter and your dough is because as the acidity of your starter rises and the acidity of your dough rises, it chokes off. It slows down the production of your yeast. So when people talk about a strong starter or a strong rising dough, that doesn't mean that their yeast is actually stronger than somebody else's yeast. It often means that their starter or their dough is less acidic. And people often confuse those topics or confuse those ideas of the strength of a starter or the strength of your dough. It really has to do with keeping the acidity low. How do you measure the acidity? With a pH meter. That's what it does. Just like a thermometer measures temperature, a pH me meter measures acidity. Now, experienced bakers are often managing acidity by taste and by smell. If you went into a bakery and watched experienced bakers, they're smelling their starter, they're smelling the dough, and you can actually smell the acidity in your dough to some level. But if you really want to be accurate and really want to do this scientifically, that's where the pH meters come in. Now there are a wide range of pH meters available. You can buy incredibly inexpensive ones that people might use for hydroponics or for testing the pH of their swimming pool water or their aquarium water or a hot tub or something like that. Those are very inexpensive pH meters for liquid up to very expensive ones that are used in laboratories for laboratory testing. I'm somewhere across that whole continuum here going from inexpensive to expensive and I'll tell you about all the features that I think are germane to sourdough baking. So these pH meters can range from $10 up to $300 or more, depending on what you're looking for. I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the four types of pH meters that I have here, and then I'll go back through each one and look at all the detailed features with you. The first one, this is the inexpensive pH meter you can buy on any internet retail site for about $10. These are really made for testing the pH of water. They're not great for testing dough or starter. I'll come back and explain why, but these are the really inexpensive ones. I tried one of these a few years ago and I failed trying to use that. Next, this is called the Checker from Hanna Instruments. This is about the lowest price pH meter that you're going to find from a reputable company like Hanna. 
This is one decimal point of accuracy. You can use this for testing food. It doesn't have what I'd call the spear tip on it, which is best for food. We'll come back and look at what you get there for about $35. Now moving up for about $125, this is the HANA Halo 2, same company. HANA has a real popular pH tester called the Halo. This is a new version that's come out, the Halo 2. This is a Bluetooth enabled pH tester where you can either read the reading on the device itself or you can connect it to your phone and send the data to your phone. This is a lab quality pH tester for food. And then up at the top end of the range, we have from Apera Instruments, this is the pH60SZ or the Zen tester. This is a lab quality pH tester with a lot of other things that come with it. This is about $275. And this has the onboard readings like the HANA. It also has the Bluetooth connection to your phone. What's different about this one is that it has a cloud-based data management system. So if you're really into analyzing the data, doing experiments, running this off of multiple devices, multiple phones, iPads, whatever, this has a much different way of managing the data on the back end. So now let's talk about the features that we're looking for. The first one is you want fast, accurate readings. All these tend to read fairly quickly. I haven't found any that are faster than others. But when you think about accuracy, you want to think about how many decimal points of accuracy you need because these two inexpensive models have one decimal point of accuracy and the two more expensive models have two decimal points of accuracy. And you're probably saying, is that really a big deal between one decimal point and two? To really understand this, you have to understand the pH scale. So let me talk about the pH scale for a minute. So before we can understand the level of accuracy that we need, we need to understand the pH scale a little bit. The pH scale measures acidity, the level of acidity in a liquid. Now the confusing thing about the pH scale is that it's a reverse scale. So a high pH reading of something like seven means that it has low acidity and a low pH reading of something like three means that it has high acidity. So you always have to do that flip in your mind. So here's the example. On the pH scale, water, which is considered to be a base liquid, it's not considered to be acidic or alkaline, it's neutral, has a pH of 7. So 7 is the equivalent of neutrality on the scale. And then as the acidity level increases, the pH falls. So when you get down to a pH of 3, which would be very acidic, that's the acidity of vinegar. So these are the two bookends that I like to think about is between seven, which is water, and three, which is vinegar. Now let's think about that for sourdough baking. What are the ingredients in sourdough baking? We have water, which comes in at a seven, neutral. We have your sourdough starter, which I'm gonna say, for example, let's say it's 3.85. Not quite as acidic as pure vinegar, but it's pretty low on the scale, meaning it has a lot of acidity in it. And then your flour has a pH of about six. When you combine all those ingredients together in your dough, your starting mixed dough has a pH of about 5.5. Then the reason people use pH meters for sourdough baking is because as the dough ferments, the starter starts producing lactic acid bacteria. The lactic acid bacteria starts creating acetic acid, which is vinegar, and it starts driving down that pH measurement as it increases the acidity. It's basically creating vinegar in your dough. And by measuring how much vinegar is created in the dough relative to the mass of dough, you'll see that pH number dropping during bulk fermentation. It's a really interesting tool to have. So we mix the dough at 5.5, we start bulk fermenting. You'll start to see as the acidity rises, the pH will drop. It drops down to five, it drops down to 4.75, it drops down to 4.5. That's about the point where you might shape your dough. So let's call that the end of bulk fermentation would be at something like 4.5. I'm just using this as an example. You shape your dough at 4.5, you rest 30 minutes, you do the final shape, you do the bench rest, it might drop from 4.5 to 4.4. You put it into the refrigerator for a cold retard or you do a countertop final proof, the acidity increases and the pH drops to 4.0. Look where we are now. Your starter was 3.85, pure starter, your dough right before it goes into the oven is 4.0. That's a very small window that you need to measure. And if you're measuring with one decimal point of accuracy, 
4.0 versus 3.9, 3.9 versus 3.8, you can see how one decimal is not really super accurate when you get down to that last moment before the dough is going into the oven. So I recommend two decimal points of accuracy if you're going to buy a pH meter. And just one point on this HANA checker, this is the $35 checker from HANA with one decimal point of accuracy. They have the checker plus for $48, which has two decimal points of accuracy if you want to consider that. So here's the lineup of the products that we're looking at. We have the inexpensive pH meter, one decimal point of accuracy. The HANA checker, one decimal point of accuracy. The HANA Halo 2, two decimal points of accuracy. And the Apera Zen, two decimal points of accuracy. These are the two that I recommend in terms of decimal point accuracy, the HANA Halo 2 and the Apera Zen. Now the next thing that you want to look at is the display. So all of these have the little digital display on them. Now when I'm using this to measure the acidity of the starter or the acidity of the dough, I'm basically leaving it in there for a couple of hours and looking at the reading. This tester, this inexpensive tester, automatically shuts off after a couple of minutes. So that's not really helpful because I have to keep turning it back on. So if you're going to buy a pH tester, you want to have one where you can disable the auto off. This inexpensive one does not allow that. The other three allow you to disable the auto off so you can basically leave it on continuously. The other feature in the display is whether the display just has the onboard display or whether it also has the Bluetooth connection. These two, the inexpensive model and the HANA checker, these do not have Bluetooth enabled capabilities, so you just have to read the screen on the device. These two, the HANA Halo 2 and the Apera Zen Test, these both have Bluetooth connectivity. So you could put this in your dough, you could put your dough in your proofing chamber, and you can see what the pH is on your phone. So you don't need to be running around looking at the meter all the time. So both of these have this wireless connection. Really handy feature, especially if you're putting your dough into a proofing box or into the oven with the light on where you don't want to keep opening the oven or opening your proofing box because that changes the temperature when you do that. So I strongly recommend the Bluetooth connectivity, but you don't need that if you're looking for an inexpensive one. The third feature is the style of tip. Th this is probably the most important feature and this is part of the reason that I hadn't bought one of these in the past because I originally purchased one of these inexpensive pH testers. This has a bulb recessed inside the tester. I don't know if you can see that. That little glass bulb needs to be submerged in the liquid that you're testing in order to get a reading. And this is really recessed in there. So I've used this to test a liquid starter and it works okay for that. But for testing dough, if your dough is a little stiff, you can't push this down into the dough far enough to make contact with that bulb. So this type of tip, that recessed bulb, is really not useful for measuring dough acidity. It could be used for measuring starter acidity. The second one, the HANA checker, this also has the bulb style tip. Let me show you up close. So this also has the bulb style tip, but you can see it's less recessed. So you can definitely use this to measure your starter and you can use it to measure dough, but you need to let it sit in the dough for a minute so the dough can actually touch that bulb and make contact with that glass bulb. So the tip is very important. The other thing about these two products is they have this open tip, which it's incredibly important that you keep this clean. If you let dried starter build up inside either one of these, it's very difficult to clean that out. So you wanna always think about the ability to keep these clean. And if you're a neat and clean person, it can really keep that open tip clean. The other two testers have something called a spear tip. This is really ideal for food testing. I strongly recommend if you're going to buy a pH tester, get one with the spear tip. Let me show you these. So on these two with the spear tip, you can see that the glass bulb is actually the tip. It's shaped like the spear tip. So it's not recessed in anything. These are perfect for testing food, really ideally suited for testing food, dough, starter, etc. But you have to be very careful because this little glass bulb is exposed. You can't throw this into your kitchen drawer with your other tools because you might break the tip. So you just have to be careful with these with the exposed tip. So the tip style, open recessed, open bulb, not too recessed, spear tip, highly recommended, spear tip, highly recommended. 
The next feature that I look at is the ability to do continuous monitoring and data management. Now, when I'm doing these tests, I want to basically run the pH meter through the entire bulk fermentation process as long as I can. And I want to see that curve of what the acidity looks like as the pH level is dropping and the acidity is rising. So there are different ways to do that. One, these two do not have Bluetooth connectivity. So for example, I put this in my starter or I put this in my dough. I can just get up and look at this every 30 minutes and write down the number and manually keep a log. The other thing that I've done when I use this for overnight bulk fermentation is I set up my camera and I do a time-lapse recording of it so I can then have a log on my phone and see every, you know, continuously what the reading was uh, during the bulk fermentation process. But these two have Bluetooth data monitoring capabilities. So the way these work is you put this into your starter or into your dough, you connect to Bluetooth on your phone and it'll start collecting data onto your phone. So you have a data file running continuously throughout the process. Now the way the Bluetooth data collection works on these two devices, the HANA Halo 2 and the Apera Zentest is completely different. And that's part of the reason for the big price difference between these two in my mind. The HANA product, this is the food care bread and dough pH tester. This connects to your phone, to an app, and it does continuous readings on Bluetooth every second. So as soon as you put turn on the Bluetooth connection, it starts sending a file to your phone every second. And then when you turn that off, those files are stored on your phone and you have the ability to then send those files to a computer or send it to a print file. It'll send a PDF or a comma separated file, but then you have to do something with that file on your computer. For example, you have to put it into a spreadsheet and do your own data manipulation. And because it's tracking data every second, these are very large data files. Now it does have the ability when you transfer the comma separated files or the PDF files, you can tell it what frequency you want to export the data at one second, 10 second, one minute, up to 15 minutes. So the, the minimum amount of data that you could transmit would be 15 minute data off of the HANA Halo 2 through your phone into a worksheet or something on your computer. The APERA Zentest system is completely different. This uses a cloud-based app that basically has its own database built into it. And it works off of multiple devices. This is important for me because if I'm doing testing of my dough, let's say I'm measuring the pH over an eight hour period, I might first be doing it on my phone, then I might leave the house, so then I move it over to my iPad, then I come back, I turn on my phone, because it's a cloud-based system, it's not putting the data directly on my phone, it's putting it into a cloud data management system. So that's a very unique difference about this if you're really into data management across multiple devices. And the other thing that I like about this is different is that you can tell it the frequency of the data that you wanna to send to the data file. So I can say, I just want one data point every 15 minutes or one data point every 30 minutes, just makes it a little bit more manageable in terms of the amount of data that's being sent to the data management system. I do want to go back to the HANA for a minute because they have something similar to that called tagging, where if you're running Bluetooth, you can basically press this blue button on the device whenever you're, you want to do a reading. Let's say I'm, I'm reading my bulk fermentation acidity every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, I can walk over and press the blue button and it'll tag that specific row in the data file. Then when you export the data files, you can say, I just want to export the tagged rows or the annotated rows. So you can also reduce the data file that way, but you have to manually, you know, be doing the manual intervention to tell it when you're tagging. So if you're doing an overnight bulk fermentation or something, that's not really practical. I could do an overnight bulk fermentation with the APRA system and just send data every 30 minutes to the data file in the cloud. And lastly, the APRA system also is a multi-asset system. So if I had three pH meters, let's say I was running a bakery or I had, I had a dozen pH meters, I can run all 10 of those under the same user ID on the cloud. I can identify which device is being used for which batch of dough. So it's just a more robust data management system if you're using multiple devices, multiple pH meters, or multiple phones to track the data. Now, if you're really interested in comparing the applications, the HANA Lab app and the APRA Zen app, 
I encourage you to go to the manufacturer's websites and really look at those applications and the specifications that they've provided because those can change over time. So I've commented on some of the features that are important to me at this time, but the apps are being continuously developed and changing, so that's the best place to look. I did put together this chart where I summarized some of the key differences at this point in time between the HANA app and the APRA app. I'm just gonna put these on this page for you to review. I'm not gonna go through these in detail. I believe that I've highlighted all the important points throughout the discussion, but I've summarized them all here if you wanna pause and look at this in more detail. The next feature that I look at in these devices is calibration and storage. Now, if you've never used a pH meter, it's a little complicated. It's not like a thermometer uh, where you can just throw it in your kitchen drawer. So these need to be calibrated from time to time. If you're running a lab or running a bakery, you would ca calibrate these every day. I use these relatively infrequently, so I calibrate them about once a week. So the way this works is periodically, daily, weekly, however often you want to do it, you have to calibrate this back to a known acidity level. So you use what's called these buffers, 4, 7, and 10. You say you want to calibrate on the device. You say, I'm calibrating to 4, you put it in the 4.0 solution. I'm calibrating to 7.0, you put it in the 7.0 solution. Calibrating to 10, you put it in the 10.0 solution. And it basically resets the device to make sure that it's accurate. All of these work kind of the same way. They have a calibration mode. You use these same calibration buffers, generally speaking. With the two Bluetooth-enabled devices, the HANA Halo 2 and the Apera Zen Test, these have uh, Bluetooth-based calibration, which is really convenient because you can say you want to calibrate on the phone, and it just takes you through step-by-step step a little bit easier. When I want to calibrate these two, you have to do it through a series of you know button pushing on here. It's just a little bit more complicated. And then you have to think about storage. The way that you store your pH meter is incredibly important because you cannot let the tip or the bulb dry out. You have to store it in a liquid solution. So you really want to think about that. So what I do when I'm not using these is I just fill this jar with some storage solution. It's a standard solution you can buy. And then I just put the pH meters in here in this jar so that the tips don't dry out. This, this HANA products, product comes with this little rubberized tip. You can put a little bit of liquid in here and store that in a case or in your drawer if you wanted to do that. I just find it easier to store them in the solution. The APRO Zen Test has a unique storage system that I like. It has this little tube. You put the solution in there. There's a little sponge in the bottom. You screw this on, and then you can store this one sideways. You could store this in your kitchen drawer if you want to. I store it in the case. You want to keep it safe in there. But this is nice because you can store it flat. These you really can't. You have to store them upright like that. Now the next thing you have to think about is the calibration, storage, and cleaning solutions. So there's some maintenance involved with these. Each one of these kits came with some basic kind of starter kit. This one has the calibration buffer. It does not have a storage or cleaning solution. The HANA products came with a calibration buffer, a clean, some cleaning solution, and some storage solution. These are really just good for the first couple of days or weeks that you're going to use the product. The APERA system came with the calibration buffers and also these little calibration vials, which are handy for actually doing the calibration. It has some extra soaking solution here for storage. So, so with each one of these kits, you want to look at what comes with it. But generally speaking, that's not going to make or break your decision on which one of these you buy, in my opinion. Now, you do want to take into consideration the cost of these solutions because you have to calibrate, clean, and maintain them. These are the, the solutions from HANA. It's basically the calibration buffers 4.0 and 7.0. This is a storage solution, and this is a special cleaning solution for food uh, testers like these. These are basically $15 a box or a bottle. There's a bottle of solution in here. I'm not sure exactly how long these will last because I'm really just getting started, you know, using these products, but I'm assuming, you know, this is probably six months to a year worth of solution for the type of testing, cleaning, and calibration that I'll be doing. A few more things to consider regarding the care and maintenance of these devices is that because you're using these in a food environment and the flour and starter and dough is very sticky, 
you have to wash these frequently, so you want them to be waterproof. The Apera, Zen Tester, and the two HANA devices are listed as waterproof devices. I've been washing these in my kitchen sink. I haven't completely submerged them in water. I don't think I would recommend that, but I've definitely used them in a wet location. These inexpensive devices are generally not listed as waterproof. And then lastly, one more thing to consider with regard to maintenance is that the electrode tip, this glass bulb that actually measures the pH, these wear out over time and they need to be replaced. I don't know how frequently they wear out. There's a way to test whether they're still working properly or not on these various devices. Some of the literature says you need to replace them every one to two years. They basically just unscrew from the device, you screw a new one on, and they're less expensive than buying the whole new device, but you wanna be aware of that when you consider the total cost of ownership of a pH meter. So what's the bottom line? Here's the quick rundown for people that just jumped to the end and wanna know the answer. Inexpensive $10 model, impossible to keep clean. You can't really use this for me measuring dough because the bulb is recessed inside of here. It doesn't have an automatic, or you can't turn off the automatic shutoff, so you have to keep turning this on. I don't recommend these inexpensive pH water testers. They're just not suited for sourdough. Second, you have the inexpensive model from HANA. This is the HANA Checker, $35. I'd say this is a satisfactory tool for beginning, for just getting into pH testing with sourdough baking. It's a little difficult to keep clean because it doesn't have the spear tip. You have to be super diligent about keeping this clean. It only has one decimal point of accuracy, which might be okay if you're just getting started and you're not like super scientific about this. And it doesn't have Bluetooth tracking, so you need to look at this every 15 or 30 minutes and write the numbers down. But this is a reasonable tester for somebody who just wants to experiment and see if it's for you. As I mentioned earlier in this video, there's another version of the HANA Checker. It's called the HANA Checker Plus for $48. That has two decimal points of accuracy versus this one. If that's the only reason you wouldn't consider buying this one, consider going up to that next level. I haven't evaluated that, but from what I can see online, it looks and operates exactly like this. It just has that second decimal point. Still has the open bulb tip. It does not have the spear tip like the Halo 2. Then you move up into this other level, the Bluetooth enabled, what I call lab quality tools, two decimal points of accuracy, Bluetooth connectivity. The HANA Halo 2 Food Care Bread and Dough pH Tester has the spear tip. This is the lowest priced pH tester I've seen with a spear tip. This is really a breakthrough at, at that price of $122 for this, for this device. The only spear tip testers out there up until this model came out were all over $200. So this is really a, a breakthrough price point for a spear tip tester. Two, level, two decimal point accuracy, Bluetooth connectivity. The Bluetooth is not as robust as the Bluetooth data management on the APRA tool. But if you're doing infrequent, continuous testing, continuous monitoring, or if you're really good at offline data manipulation in Excel or something like that, you can make this one work. The APRA Zentest PH60S-Z, this retails for about $275. It's expensive, but this, in my opinion, is really the top of the line model because it has all the same features as the HANA Halo 2, Plus, it has that cloud-based data management system. It works across multiple devices, and you can have multiple pH testers all under the same account. If you're running a lab, you're running a bakery, or if you really want the top-of-the-line data management capabilities, this is the one. Now, a lot of people ask, why, why is there such a big size difference between this APRA Zentest and, and the HANA Halo 2? It's because of the batteries. This uh, APRA tool uses four AAA batteries in here. So this is really just a large battery compartment. The HANA product, both of these, in fact, use these little button style or coin style batteries. So it's just a smaller footprint. Does that make a big difference? I mean, this, this APRA is a little top heavy. So when you're putting this in a small jar of starter or something like that, sometimes you have to prop it up because it has the, the, the weight at the top here from the batteries. This HANA is a little bit more uh, versatile. Here's a summary of the key criteria I used in this evaluation. You can pause here if you'd like to review this in more detail. So I was originally planning to end the video here because I think I've given you enough information for you to make an individual decision 
about which one of these pH meters you would want to buy. But then I watched the video back and I know with certainty as soon as I published it, I'd get a thousand comments that would say, which one should I buy? Which one's the best one? Just tell me the answer. So against my better judgment, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about how to make the purchasing decision on these, depending on your individual circumstances. So first, if you're really making a decision based on the cost of these, now I get it. I waited two years to buy one of these because they're expensive. I, ha I hate telling people that you have to go out and buy more stuff to bake sourdough bread because it starts to add up over time. And if you're trying to make a decision about, you know, am I going to put gas in my car or buy a pH meter? I've been there. I mean, it's hard to believe from the guy who has two dishwashers and has a kitchen island bigger than the state of Rhode Island. But I know, you know, it's a difficult decision to spend the money on stuff like this. So if you really are focused on the cost, I would recommend not wasting your money on these inexpensive pH testers. Look at the Hanna Checker Plus. This one's the Hanna Checker, one decimal point of accuracy. I think you need two decimal points of accuracy. That's the $48 version. This still has the open bulb end, which you have to keep clean. Doesn't have Bluetooth, but this is a good pH tester for getting started, $48. Now let's say you're at the other end of the spectrum where money is no object, or let's say your spouse went out and just spent $1,000 on some ridiculous purchase, and they come home and say, oh, why don't you go buy yourself some sourdough thingy? This is what I would buy. Apera Zen Tester, $275. I'd also get the calibration buffer and cleaning solution for $25. I'd also throw in a Challenger bread pan for $300, a Broden Taylor proofer for $200, the Thermapen thermometer for $100, and a Headley and Bennett Chef's apron for $100 to round it out to an even $1,000. This is what I call the sourdough swag pack. But now if you're the type of person who looks at the sourdough swag pack and says, I think I can find the same or similar items at TJ Maxx for about half the price, then you want to buy the Hanna Halo 2. This is the best value for money, $122 spear tip lab quality pH tester with the Bluetooth capability and the app. Next, some people might make the decision not based on the cost of the item, but how they use it. That's a good way to think about it. What are you going to do with the pH tester? So for example, if you just want to dabble in this and see if it makes sense, Let's say you want to test the pH of your starter before you mix your dough. You want to use the pH tester to know when bulk fermentation is done, and you might do a test at the end of final proofing before it goes into the oven. So you're just doing a couple of tests along the way. You're not doing data logging, graphing, anything like that. You don't need the Bluetooth capability. I recommend the HANA Checker Plus, $48. However, there is one caveat. You need to keep this clean because it doesn't have that spear tip. So if your starter jar is a mess, if you have dried starter on the tip of your thermometer in your drawer, don't buy this item because when you test your starter and you take it out, it's all full of gunk inside that electrode. And then let's say I just wipe it off with a rag. There's still starter jammed in there around the electrode. It will ruin the device and you'll end up buying another one. So if you can't keep it clean, go up to the HANA Halo 2, $122. It has the spear tip, much easier to keep clean. Now let's say you're a baker who's gonna use this all the time, that's what I do. I test the pH of my starter five times before I mix it in my dough. I test the pH of my dough in bulk fermentation every 30 minutes, I check the final proof dough, I'm using this thing constantly. And even if you're not using the Bluetooth capability or the app, if you're really using it all the time, you want the HANA Halo 2 with the spear tip because it's easy to keep clean. You can just wipe this down. If you don't have the spear tip, you have to be running this under water in the sink every time you use it to make sure that it's clean. HANA Halo 2, $122. This is the best for frequent use, even if you're not using the Bluetooth app. If you're running a bakery, for example, have this in your pocket, you're walking around, you're testing different batches of starter, you're testing different dough. That's at 4.4, this is at 4.5. This one's at 4.1, that's gotta go into the oven. Test, 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 you're using it all the time. Hannah Halo 2, $122. Now we move up to the people who want to use the Bluetooth capability and use the app on their phone. Now the simplest way to use the app is just as a remote display. So if you basically, what I do, put this in my proofing chamber when my dough is bulk fermenting, I connect to Bluetooth so I can see what the real time pH level is. I go in my living room, I sit on the couch, I start watching reruns of Jeopardy, and I can glance at my phone 
and monitor what my pH level is. I can even set an alarm that says when it gets down to a pH of 4.5, wake me up if I happen to not off. So just using the Bluetooth capability as a remote monitoring device, you want the HANA Halo 2. You can do the same thing with the Apera, but this is more than twice the price. And if you're really just using it for monitoring and not really data logging, HANA is still the best value. Now let's talk about the people who want to use the full capabilities of the Bluetooth enabled app on the phone using the Halo Lab app or the Apera Zen app. Now to evaluate these, you really need to understand the specifics of how these two apps work and it's kind of detailed, but if I really had to boil it down, I like to create these types of charts after I bake that show what my pH looked like when I mixed the dough down through bulk fermentation, through shaping and into the cold retard. I also like to do these types of charts that show what's my pH reading from three consecutive starter refreshes. I also like to post the results of my bakes on social media, showing the pH at each level. I show the steps in the recipe and I show a photo of my bakes. If you wanna do this type of analysis, the Apera Zen is more suited to that type of analysis. It's just a little easier to get the data off the app, get it into a worksheet and do that type of analysis. Now it's possible to do the same types of analytics using the HANA Halo 2 and exporting that data to a spreadsheet, but it just takes a lot more manual manipulation. And when I think about the value of my time, that's where I have to really evaluate, do I spend $122 on a device that requires me to do a lot of offline work on my computer, or do I spend $275 on a device that has a better app that makes it a little easier for the data analytics, the app or a Zen. That's all I have. Now the decision is yours. I hope I've given you enough information to make the right decision based on your specific needs. Now over the past month and a half, I have been using these three testers for some extraordinary experiments that I've been doing. Here's some video of some experiments that I'm doing in my kitchen, which now looks like a chemistry lab. I'm looking at measuring the acidity level of starter to determine the optimal starter strength, optimal starter feeding ratios. I'm using these testers to check when is bulk fermentation done, when is final proofing done. I think the findings here are gonna be extraordinary. So I invite you to come back and look for some new videos that I'll have coming out over the next few months, where I'm gonna take everything that I'm learning about how to use these pH testers to really close the gap in sourdough baking between beginners and experts. Because I think experts intuitively manage and measure and sense the acidity of their starter and the acidity of their dough. And that is really kind of the secret ingredient in the skill set of an experienced sourdough baker is this intuition about the acidity levels in the starter and the dough. For beginning bakers, it's hard to get that through intuition unless you're baking a thousand loaves. So what I'm hoping to do is use a little piece of technology to close that gap, to help beginning sourdough bakers really learn what is the acidity level of your starter and your dough, and how do you manage that to bake extraordinary loaves. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck on your sourdough journey. Please come back and check out my new videos in the coming months.